We begin with a view of our extragalactic neighborhood with individual galaxies represented by black dots at positions determined by their red shifts. Concentrations of dots are at the locations of major clusters. A gap of missing information is caused by obscuration in the equatorial band of the Milky Way. Surfaces of high density of matter are shown from a quasi-linear model of galaxy flows. These surfaces will be repeatedly introduced to provide orientation in the ensuing discussion. In the region around the Milky Way galaxy, extending out to where the universe is expanding away from us at 8,000 kilometers per second, or slightly more than 100 megaparsec, there are three major concentrations of matter. There is our home Launiakea supercluster with the great attractor at its core in a complex of rich clusters. There is the Perseus Pisces filament of clusters, And there is the great wall containing the coma cluster and stretching out of our scene toward the Hercules cluster. We ask, how did these structures form? The view shifts to the orbits that galaxies have followed over their lifetime. Galaxy orbits are constrained by equations of motion for the evolving gravity field of the mass distribution within a model dominated by dark matter and dark energy. Physically plausible orbits can be recovered, although once galaxies enter clusters, their orbits become hopelessly complicated. Also, over the 13 billion year history of the universe, Galaxies form from diffuse material through accretion and mergers, complexities that cannot be recovered in detail. Do not trust individual orbits in detail. Give attention to overall flow patterns. The mass distribution that governs these flows is generally well constrained. A reenactment of the history of our corner of the universe is given representation by almost 10,000 constituents. These elements reasonably account for all the condensed matter in the volume. They are located in distance with sufficient accuracy to constrain the model. Emanating from our position at the origin, the red arrow points towards supergalactic SGX, the green arrow points towards supergalactic SGY, and a blue arrow points toward us on the positive SGZ axis at the supergalactic North Pole. The arrows have length 20 megaparsec. Step the scene back to a redshift of 4 when the universe was 1.5 giga year old. Structure was only beginning to form. Elements at this early time represent the dispersed matter that will gather into the collapsed structures observed today. We watch the structures evolve over 100 steps in time until today. The orbits are shown in a globally expanding frame of reference that cancels the dominant cosmic expansion to reveal the motions induced by gravitational forces. We give an overview of the Launiakea supercluster.
there is a flow toward the region labeled Centaurus and four clusters. Elements in the upper half of this view are all moving down toward the supergalactic south negative SGZ. There is a prominent flow along the Pavo Indus filament toward Norma. We turn attention to the Perseus Pisces filament. Flows are systematically toward the spine of the filament. The most prominent flow is toward the Perseus cluster. Lesser flows are seen toward other named locations. The third major basin of attraction is the Great Wall. There is a pronounced flow toward the Great Wall from our side. Backside information is lacking. The current model of the Great Wall region is incomplete. A transparent shell outlines the full extent of Laniakea supercluster. The shell extends beyond the 8,000 km per second limit of the orbit reconstructions in some directions, but is distinctly separated from the Perseus, Pisces, and Great Wall structures within the region of study. Two companion videos will give closer attention to the flow patterns in each of the Laniakea and Perseus Pisces regions. 
a final video will follow orbits into the future to twice the current age of the universe.